and we were in Genesis chapter one, and and we looked at the the creation narrative, and and specifically we focused in on on the part where God made us, and and using that as as a foundation as a platform uh, to jump off of. Uh, you know, if you don't have good footing, then it, you know it doesn't matter how 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 powerful your legs are, um, or how much you trust. Sometimes, if you don't have good footing, a leap can turn into a fall real quick. Uh, and so, we wanted to go back to the beginning, and and just go back to the very foundation of God creating us, uh, and and the thought and care that he put into into making us and making us in his image and in his likeness uh, and and knowing that uh, that he is our manufacturer uh, enables us to trust him just a little more uh, what i'd like to do this morning is is jump ahead to genesis uh, chapter 3 and i uh, we're in a bible study series at net church called back to eden and and we talked about this uh, this passage or parts of this passage a little bit last night. And but there's a specific part that I'd like to that I'd like to discuss and share this morning, in Genesis chapter three. Now, uh, in Genesis chapter two, there uh, we we get to see how God intended things to be. Like that's that's it, it, Eden, and and everything is great, everything's perfect. And then uh, in your Bible, it might say at the t there might be a little section heading at the top of of chapter three called the fall and and I just wanted to to show us some things to be careful for um, so that we will be so that we will be better in, empowered uh, and and have a better focus on the firm foundation so that we can we can keep our eyes fixed uh, fixed on Jesus and, and jumping towards this prize I'd like to read uh, Genesis 3 uh, verse uh, verses uh, 1 through uh, verses 1 through through 5 verses 1 through 5 and it says in the ESV uh, now the serpent was more crafty than the other beast of the field that the Lord had made and he said to the woman did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden. And, and the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat it, that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And, and I'm going to I'm just going to stop right there because there's there's so much here. And I just want to point a couple things out. First of all, the devil is a trickster. The devil is the Bible calls him the father of lies. And it's important to to take a look at how liars lie like the the beginning of the Bible gives us the the blueprint for how things are supposed to be and and how how some people work, some beings, some creatures, the serpent. Uh, it, 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 this is like this is his game plan right here. So if you remember back in, in Genesis, in Genesis one, on day six, after God had created everything else, he said, now let us make mankind, humankind in our image and in our likeness, and let us give him uh, dominion over the earth. Um, and, and so God created us that way. And, the, and, and then in, in Genesis chapter two, where, where the garden is planted, uh, it actually says God planted the garden. So this was separate from the whole creation, the whole six days. He planted the garden just for us, and, and in the garden was the tree of life, and then there's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And it says in, uh, starting at verse 15 in chapter 2, that God placed, placed the man in the garden and told him to work the garden and to take care of it. And then he said, now, there's the tree of life, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Do not eat the fruit 
from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you do, you will surely die. And a few things happen. Now Eve is on the scene and the devil comes in and says to Eve, now we're assuming that there's been some conversation either from Adam to Eve or God to Eve or maybe Eve knew it. We're not going to get into all of that. But, but Eve knows that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is not to be consumed. And the first thing that the devil does, did God really say? Did God, did God really say? And so he, he brings in, he brings in question. He brings in, he causes, uh, causes some, some doubt. And doubt keeps us from trusting. Plain and simple, doubt keeps us from trusting. But he he didn't just he didn't just question what God said. And pay attention to this because this is a tactic of some manipulative people. When 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 we're not being used by God and we are being manipulative. This is something that, that some manipulative people will do. They, they follow, Following this blueprint, uh, did God actually say, you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? Well, first of all, God didn't, that's not what God said. And Satan draws Eve into this conversation. Had he just, had his basis been truth, had he said, did God really say not to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil? That would have been a short conversation. Yes, that's what he said. Thank you. Goodbye. But first, there's the seed of doubt. Did God really say? And then something that's totally not true at all. And when somebody says something to you that's just totally not true, there's this this need. We feel compelled to to correct the record, to make the record straight. And and so she responds. The woman said to the serpent, "We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, you shall not eat." of the fruit of the tree that's in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Now, uh, one, of those, one of those little pieces in there was made up. Don't touch it. And the reason it's so important to, to point that out is because, well, that's, that's kind of, that's not what God said. Not only did he not say that, it, it creates a contradiction because God said when he placed man in the garden, to, to work the garden, to take, to take care of it. And you cannot take care of what you cannot touch. If you can't touch it, then you can't take care of it. And so first the devil created some confusion in Eve's mind. And then her maybe trying to put a little extra on it or, you know, I, I don't know. But now there's some made up rule. That, that doesn't belong. And, and when we have made up rules, made up rules can create confusion for ourselves. It can keep us from doing the very things that, that we're supposed to be doing. Because look, everything that, uh, everything that God puts us, uh, gives us charge to care for is not always necessarily for us. We're not always supposed to consume everything that we care for. That's our service. That's our service to God. And so now Eve gets that confused because she's engaging in conversation with this devil who initiates conversation with with a mistruth, with misinformation. And when you know how, when you start with misinformation, you know, end with a bad result. And so she she does her best to correct the record, but but listen to what the serpent says. Listen to what the devil says in verse four. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die for the Lord knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open. You'll be like God, knowing good and evil. Now, here's here's the big trick. There's a lot in here. I just I want to point out this part. You will not surely die for the Lord knows. Well, what the Lord knows. Well, there's an implication there, isn't there? The Lord knows, which means there's something you don't know. And that's a trick. This idea that, wait, there's something I don't know. Do I need to know it? Should I, should I know it? He starts, God knows that when you eat, your eyes will be opened. Wait, does that mean my eyes are closed? Is there something that I, is there something I'm not saying? Wait a minute. Is God, is God holding out on me? Is, is God really holding out on me? There's something he knows that he didn't tell me. And, and apparently my eyes are closed. There's something he doesn't want me to see. 
there's that little bit of doubt and it it it, it challenges the devil brings a, a challenge and, and and attacks god's character and insinuates that god's motives are not pure and so now we get to thinking or eve gets to thinking we get to thinking well if god has god might have impure motives towards me well how can i trust that i don't know about this and and here's here's how this devolves for us if if i can believe that god has impure motives then i'm no longer believing that god is good if i believe that god is holding out on me and if i don't do if i don't have some control and, and do some of this for myself then in, in essence i'm really saying i'm not so sure that god is good well if god's not good then he's not trustworthy either you see you see where this is going and if he's not trustworthy then his word can't be trusted either all of that from engaging in this deceitful conversation but there's something else there's something else that the, that that the devil does he tempts eve with something she already has there's a doubt that's created in God. I'm not so sure if his motives are pure towards me because it sounds like maybe he's holding out on me. So since I can't trust him, let me let me trust myself. Like that's a better option. For God knows that when you eat, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Wait, so I'm not I'm not like God. Now there's this doubt in self. God had God already said the triune God already said let us make mankind humankind in our image and likeness. Eve was already like God. And there are things about us that God had already has said about us and the enemy will 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 trick us into disbelieving the truth about ourselves. Because since we dis, since we have this doubt about God and if he's really for us, then now I can't really believe what he said about me, so now I've got doubt even about my own self. And there's no way to jump that way. There's no way to jump if, I don't, if I'm not sure God has good motives, how do I really know he's gonna catch me? And now the things about me, maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I can't jump. Maybe I'm gonna slip if I jump. Maybe the, just all this doubt, and, and that's what drains us away. That's what, that's what draws us away from trusting. And rather than leaning into our leap, we, we move our weight backwards and we stand still or even go in the opposite direction. And so what, what, I, wanna, what I wanna encourage us this morning is, is hold fast to truth. And the truth is, and this is a little tiny bit of the truth, that, that God made us in his image and in his likeness. He made us complete the way he wanted us to be. This idea that we might have a better way is false. If, if any thought comes in that challenges what we already know about the Lord or what, or what God says, we have to dismiss it. Just like Jesus did when the devil tempted him in the desert. Came back, with, nope. This is what the this is what God's word says. Nope, this is what God's word says. And yes, the enemy knows what God said too. We got to know it better. We got to we got to know this book. We have to we have to spend time in prayer. We have to commune with God so that we might know him, know his character, and know that he is for us. The reason he is for us is because he he made us so that we could dwell in fellowship throughout eternity with him one more verse i want to read for you real quick in in the book of the book of the psalms psalm uh, psalm 84 and uh and verse 11 for for the lord god is a sun and shield the Lord bestows favor and honor. It's this part. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. 
No good thing does he withhold. God is not holding out on us. If there's something we can't see, we don't need to see it. <laughs> Let's not go looking for trouble. He's not going to withhold anything good from us. And we have to trust that because he is good, he knows what is good. And let's not make that decision for ourselves. Because that's what we see that Eve does in the very next verse. Now the devil backs out of it. And now Eve sees for herself that, th that the fruit is good for food. And it, and it looks nice. And, and it's good for gaining wisdom. Now she's making all these decisions on her own. Because there was some doubt that God was even good. But God is good and he will not withhold anything good from those who walk uprightly. Let's pray. Father God, thank you that your word says that you, that you are righteous, that you are just, that you are good. Thank you that we can trust your character. And no matter what the doubt in our own mind says, no matter what whispers of the enemy or, or even trends in society that suggest that you are not good. God, you are good, and we trust and believe that you will work all things together for the good of those who love you, the called according to your purpose. Like the psalmist said, those who, who walk uprightly. Allow us to maintain our trust in you and not be deceived or derailed into thinking that we can come up with a better solution for our situations. You're all wise, you are all knowing, and you embody love, you are love, and we thank you for your love. Bless us today as we go forward, and that we would carry this work with us and, and we would live it out in our actions and our thoughts.